everyone. Welcome to episode three of Show Me How It's Done. I hope you're ready for a fun little inky day. Um, this card or technique came at the request of my good friend Heather Dowsett, so I'm going to give you a little shout out. She asked me to show her how it was done, so I thought I would share that with you. And um, if you guys come up with anything that you're wondering about and think, hey, I'd really love a tutorial, I would love if you just shot me a note and let me know. I do have some ideas for the next month coming up, but in the new year I do have some slots open for uh, techniques that maybe you want to know about too. So without further ado, I'm going to switch cameras and show you how to do a really, really fun technique here. Okay. So, as you can see, I've got a bunch of different inks available and stuff. But what I'm going to show you today is how to take a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And usually when we run this through our embossing folder and our big, um, we're going to call it the Big Boss, because that's what it's going for right now. It's the replacement for our um, Big Shot machine. But the new cut and emboss machine is kind of a tongue twister. So. When you typically run it through, you're going to get this beautiful engraved image on your card. However, I'm going to teach you, this one's a really rough one, it was my first, um, how to get this background color onto your embossing paper as well, so that you have these raised images still showing through as the white, okay? So I have some cards for you to see after, but let's get going with the technique. So you're going to need to start with a piece of Whisper White cardstock. I have cut mine at four inches by five and a quarter so that it can fit perfectly onto the front of the cards that I'm going to build. You can choose for this card selection, because we're using some snowflake scenes, right? Any of these three colors would be fantastic. You could also go in the purples or anything else, but I like the blue for this project. I'm not going to show you Bonnie blue because you can't really see it when I'm demonstrating it, but I do have a card to show you that I have run through with Bonnie blue ink. And Night of Navy I'm going to choose to use for my sentiments for this card. So I'm choosing Misty Moonlight and what you're going to do is you're going to forewarn you probably want to have some baby wipes or your chamois handy because you may get inky with this. So you're going to open up one of our embossing folders, okay? This is not a 3D one, so it's one of our thinner ones, which means we're going to use our embossing plates, and I'll show you what to do. You need to look for the side that has the Stamping Up logo on it, okay? So the one side will have these snowflakes that are kind of raised, and these ones are indented into the embossing folder. We're doing our project on this side, the indented side, and it has the Stamping Up logo with it, okay? So you're going to take one of our ink pads. If you have the old style foam ink pads, they work really well if you want to just rub across them. But as you'll notice, if I try to rub across this one, it sticks and it's really sticky. Um, for me to pull because our foam is just such a nice clean surface that what you're going to want to do if you have the new ink pads is actually dab color all over. Okay, so we're going to get serious here and we're going to start dabbing color all over. Again, have something under you. This is a black piece of paper for me because um, you don't want to do this right on your desk. You'll get ink all over the place. Okay. So you're just nicely, can you see that color just building onto the folder really beautifully? If you are worried about streaks or something, um, A, don't worry too much because you want kind of a misty look in the background. And B, you can take a sponge and just dab some of those heavier spots if you want. But I kind of almost like the mystical look in the background because no night sky is perfect. You're always going to have wisps of cloud and that sort of stuff. Also, don't talk too long in between doing this because as you can see, the color is now starting to evaporate. So I'm just going to quickly lay down a nice base of color here, okay, like so. And then you take your Whisper White card 
and you'll have to do this in one motion. You put it onto the, uh, the side that you have down and close your folder, okay? Press it just to get it into place and now you have to be really careful that you're not, um, you're not moving it out of position because you've got that color all in one spot and you don't wanna rub it all over the place, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and bring my big boss in here for you to see. So this guy, if you haven't played with it yet, is amazing. It basically takes up half the storage that my original um, Big Shot did. And it just has these legs that you can bring down like so, okay? The base plate that we're going to use is our very standard base, okay? So this is that nice thick plate, putting it down here. And there is, when you have your package, this little shim. This is for when you're doing cutting dies. You do not need it right now, so we're gonna put it to the side. All we need is our two clear plates, okay? So I'm using old ones. If you order new ones, they also have nice numbers in them so that you can follow along with the directions on that platform. But so we've got your plates. I'm actually gonna use that one for the top. So this is my ugly one and we're going to gently put our embossing folder on here and one more plate on top of it, okay? So now the table may get a little shaky because I'm going to roll this through. I never roll sideways, this is quite interesting. And before you get, um, before you pop it out, just start rolling back the other way. You want it to go through a couple times to try and get all the ink on that you can. If you are super, super skilled at keeping things kind of in place, you can also turn this over and just kind of take a peek, see if there's any spots that maybe need anything. Mine look really good, but just to be sure, you could also just quickly grab this guy and roll it through once more, okay? So it's completely up to you how dark you want that color to be set in. The more times you roll, the more ink from the embossing folder will come off. Okay, so I'm going to move this now. And this guy. And we're going to open this up. Okay, so nice and carefully, we've got our snowflake background here. So this turned out really nicely. You can see that my white snowflakes from the embossing folder are really standing out as compared to this one, which I only rolled through like one time. I ended up missing some of those grooves by the snowflake. This one will lighten a little bit as it, um, as it dries, but it's pretty much gonna look as saturated as you see it now, which is really nice. So you can do the same thing, as long as you just kind of keep this open and maybe don't get the other side as dirty, you could just ink this up again and roll through another piece of paper. If you wanna switch colors, rinse this underwater and just kind of shake it off before you're done, okay? So if we're gonna put this onto a card, we're grabbing just a piece of white cardstock for the back. So this I have cut at four and a quarter by 11 inches. Put a score line down the middle at five and a half. And we're just going to fold that. You'll probably want to move yourself off of whatever surface you were working on because you're gonna end up with little blue on there. So we'll just be careful and uh, move down a little bit. Here we go, okay? So this guy I thought was really cute if you just added it straight onto the front of the card. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape. I'm a double-sided tape girl, but you certainly can use snail uh, if you want. The reason I'm not using dimensionals, you will see, because we're going to put a cute little element on the front of this, and the card is gonna be big enough without you putting this layer on with dimensionals as well, okay? So nice and centered. And then to decorate, I have a few little pieces 
Um, so this is a stitched circle from our Stitched Shapes dies. It is the second largest one. There's only four, so it's not the largest one, it's the second largest one. And then I have cut three snowflakes from this beautiful die set here. This is the companion die, of course, to the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. So these are a current bundle that you can get. And just FYI, all the product I'm showing you today, you can order on my online store. And today only, we have a 10% off deal going on. So you could get this bundle, which is already discounted at 10% at 10% more, or you can get inks and paper. So I'll put the link once I post the pictures for you and uh, you can shop and get a great deal today. So I chose just three of the snowflake dies from this set and I cut them out with our balmy blue glitter paper. So now to assemble them, I like to start with this funky looking one here as a backdrop. So I actually put just a little tiny dimensional on him then I put my large snowflake offset on top of that. So it's gonna start making you dizzy watching this. That's why I'm going slow. And then this detailed one I'm using as my front. So I'm just going to put a dimensional right in the middle. Don't worry that you can see through because we're actually gonna put a gem in the middle of this, okay? So just throw that right in the middle of this snowflake here. Now there are some really pretty um, kind of bluish blackish gems that go with this snowflake suite. But today I wanted something that tied in kind of the, um, the subtlety of a winter crystal. So I'm gonna use the clear faceted gems and just one of the large ones here can go right over top of the middle of my snowflake. And as you can see, I covered that dimensional completely, okay? So on the back, of my snowflake I am going to put some dimensionals again so you can see why I didn't pop the other part of the card up because this is going out completely make sure you've got a nice base covered and then we're gonna put this straight onto the stitched circle okay. again flip her over add some dimensionals to the back and then we're going to put this up at the top of our card. So completely up to you whether you want the big part of the snowflake going up or you want it kind of subtle and going to the sides. I kind of like it being bold. Now I wanted a sentiment for this card. So I chose one just from this Snowflake Wishes stamp set. The Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas so I've cut myself a little piece of balmy blue cardstock and I cut it just larger than this stamp set. Okay, so I think it ended up being about two and a half um, and it's three quarters of an inch thick. So this is where I'm bringing in that Knight of Navy because I wanted a really bold color for my sentiment so that it nicely stands out. Again, just tap, tap, tap on our ink pads. We don't want to dig into them. Otherwise, you're going to end up with lots of ink on your stamp. Okay. And just rock gently back and forth for a second. If you're finding you're not getting clear um, letters showing up, my ink pad is just super dry, um, so I know the problem. You also could just stick a foam mat under yourself or a, um, a catalog even will do. Okay, so I just, I've been using this guy way too much. So I'm just gonna flip this over, try once more. That's what I love about paper. There's always two sides. And that looks a lot better, okay? So I am going to put some dimensionals on the back of this piece. And we're going to stick that under our snowflake for a nice little sentiment. So this is a super, super easy um, material-wise card. The only thing that you're gonna you know, start adding up is the dies, but if you don't have the dies, you could honestly use one of our snowflake punches. You could stamp something on this circle, or um, if you don't have the balmy blue paper, you can also cut your snowflakes out of the cardstock colors that you may have in stock. 
Okay, so this was card number one with this technique. And I just wanted to show you a couple of um, ones that I stepped the project up a little bit. Okay, so here we'll switch them. This one here would be the next step. Instead of putting my piece of paper on top of the white background, I cut it down instead so that it measured three and three quarters by five. And then I put it onto a balmy blue base and a Knight of Navy um, card. And then it's the exact same card front that you see. Same color scheme, but the colors kind of pop out a little bit more. Now this one here, I did change completely. I promised you um, that the balmy blue ink pad here was just beautiful with the snowflakes, and it really is. Look how clearly you can see the white in there as well. It's really hard for me to show you on the embossing folder though, because it is really see-through. So I did a balmy blue on my cardstock, and then I used a knight of navy base and a card front that's the balmy blue. Now my one change also for the card front, I did the same thing for the snowflake, but instead of stamping on my Knight of Navy card, I ended up embossing because it's kind of challenging to see a dark ink on a dark paper. So I used our Versamark ink, which is our sticky ink, and then I heat embossed with the white embossing powder. So here you go. I hope you guys had fun with our technique today. And I'm excited to see what you make with your embossing folder. I know most of you have one at least in your stock. So hopefully you can take this technique and make something out of it. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next week. Bye.